ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Welcome. Well, they said that all good things come to an end, and sadly, this is the last show in our present series. Aww. Yes, it is a shame. But they also say that time flies, so it won't be long before we'll be back again. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's clear the sinuses. <laughs> but now we're going to start tonight's show with a phone call, and it's to Don Philpotts. Now, Don is a singer in his spare time, and he sings under the name of Gene Dillon. Now, usually when I telephone somebody, I invite them to come on the show the following week. But as we won't be here next week, <laughs> I'm going to ask Don to get here tonight. Now, fortunately, I happen to know that at this very moment, Don is having a nosh in a restaurant not too far away from where we are. So here we go. Surprise, surprise. It's only... Ten digits, yes. <laughs> and here's another surprise. I'm going to do the recall because I dialed the number earlier. <laughs> yes, you can do that with these things. Wonderful, these phones. Good evening, Gourmet Pizza Company, Gabriel Dwarf. I'm out. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> you talk amongst yourselves, Brian. Well, I tell you, I mean, I'd like to speak to one of the customers where he, in the restaurant close by you. Yeah. And his name is Don Philpotts. Don Philpotts? Yes. You couldn't do as a favour, could you, Chuck? I think not. Because my I'm nerves are shattered now. Second. Could you go and get him for us, please? No problem. Hold on. Thank you. <laughs> I hope he's not halfway through a pizza. <laughs> Hello? 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 Who is that speaking, please? It's uh, Don Philpotts. Uh, I'm, I wasn't aware that anybody knew I was here. Who's that? Who else? Have you got a television on? Pardon? Have you got a television on? <laughs> We've got more than a television on. Oh, surprise, surprise. The camera's on you, Don Philpotts. <laughs> yes, and if you look into the camera, Chuck, give us a lovely beaming smile, because I can see you. <laughs> Philpotts, it's Scylla here. Who's that? It's Scylla Chuck. You mean, got a lot of Scylla, that one. <laughs> yes, it's Scylla here in the flesh. Now, Don, let's get down to business. Yeah. Your wife Janet tells, Janice tells me that you're a bit of a warbler. In fact, you're a lovely singer, is that right? I am in the bathroom, yeah. <laughs> no, you do more than that. In fact, you do a little bit of operatic. Singing as well, is that right? Occasionally, yeah. Well, Janice tells me, in fact, you you used to sing Ness and Dorma when Pavarotti was a skinny little wimp, is that right? <laughs> yeah, he was a lightweight when I started. <laughs> well, Don, here it is. Surprise, surprise. We would like you to sing in front of our audience a little bit of Pavarotti. Will you do that? I think I'll leave a stiff brandy first. <laughs> You can have anything you like as long as you can walk walk to the studios because we're only next door, Chuck. You know that. Well, uh, we passed it in the taxi coming in, actually. Did you? So really? I think it's round the corner. Well, you'll pass it in the taxi coming back as well. <laughs> now, don't worry about the food. Going. Don't worry about the food, Chuck, because you can have your pizzas as a takeaway. Oh, I'm going to And will you come along then, Chuck? What, do you want me to come now? Oh, yes, please. And bring your dear wife Janice with you. Will you do that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'm, um... <laughs> I know you gobs. <laughs> Have a quick gargle. I shall see you in a minute. All right, Chuck. See you later. Ta-ra, yeah, Don. Bye-bye. Uh,
Sitting in our audience tonight are some of John's friends who've come along to give him moral support. And where are you, gang? Whereabouts are you? And there they are. Oh, look, and they're all applauding themselves. <laughs> and they haven't done anything yet. <laughs> now, I do believe that you've got a, a, a Sally Carmichael amongst you. Is that right, sweetheart? Yes. Where yes. is she? Yes. yes. Where are you, Sally? With. Sally. With. Give us a wet. Come down and join me. I must tell you about this amazing coincidence I know about you. Come down and join me, Sally. Look. <laughs> Oh, have a sit down there. You won't believe this letter I got about you. <laughs> and you'll never guess who it was from. Amazing coincidence. I got a letter about Don Philpott, right? Yes. And I got another one about you. And guess who it was from? Mabel. Mabel Finney. Where are you, Mabel? <laughs> it's her fault out there. And she said, oh, very kindly in her letter, that for over 50 years, you have been, you've been putting on shows and pantomimes yes. for all the disabled children yes. and the grown-ups yes. in yes. and around the Sheffield yes. area. Yes. And she thought, well, it was about time, because you've raised an awful lot of money for medical equipment, it's about time that somebody put on a show for you. And surprise, surprise, Sally, or Aunt Sally, as they call you up there yes, in Sheffield. That's right. That's exactly what we're going to do tonight. But we are going to put on our very own pantomime just for you. Oh. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yes. And Sally, it happens to be my favourite pantomime. It's called Aladdin. You must know that one. I do. Yes, I'm going to be playing Aladdin. Oh, you are yes. wonderful. And you are going to be in the <gasps> VIP seat. Oh, because you're not staying here with all this lot. <laughs> oh, no, you've got your very own little theatre to go to. Oh, dear. And here to take you to that VIP seat <laughs> is our very own, our lovely Bob Carroll. Jeez, come in, Bob! <laughs> <laughs> well, Sally, this is it. This is your night, Chuck. And there's that. Well, you'll never guess. Is what have you come as? <laughs> I'm wishy-washy. He's wishy-washy. He's wishy-washy. Now, tell, explain to Sally where she, where is she going? It's her own theatre. Well, we have where a special going? Riverside theatre all laid up. The audience are actually in their seats now, so all we need is uh, Sally to join us, and the show can commence. And the show can commence. Good hey, gracious. Sally. <laughs> where are you going? You're going with him? That's oh, where you're going. <laughs> to your very own Riverside theatre. And we'll see you later, all right? And I'll be dressed up as a Latin. I can't wait, Sally. Can't. See, this is your night. <laughs> Come on, Chuck. See you later. <laughs> Well, we shall be joining Bob later for Act One of Aladdin. But in the meantime, let me tell you about 12-year-old Adele Kirby. Her mum and dad wrote and told us that Adele was crackers about ballet. And her dream is to become a professional ballerina. So the other week, we sent our Bob up to Bronze Grove to sweep Adele literally off her feet. Adele! Hello, come here a minute. Hello, Adele. It's Adele Kirby, isn't it? Yeah. Come out here where we can see you. That's it. Hello, surprise, surprise. Hello. <laughs> hey, Bob. How are you? Hello, Adele. Well. Yeah. Now, a little bird tells me that you like dancing, is that right? Yes. What sort of dancing do you like? Well, I like ballet's my favourite Well, dance. I'm glad you said that. Because, surprise, surprise, I'm glad you mentioned the ballet. Because, as we speak, the Birmingham Royal Ballet are waiting in the wings to give you a day of your lifetime. Is that right? Yeah, it's brilliant. Where are your ballet shoes now? They're up there. Where? In my bedroom. In your bedroom? We'd better go and get them and get on our way then, hadn't we? Right. Adele, can I introduce you to Alan De Bruy, who's our ballet master? Hello, Adele. Hello. And this is Joseph Chipola. Hello. And Ravenna Tucker, who are principal Hello. dancers. Hi. And Jonathan Higgins, who's our company pianist. Hi, Adele. Hi. You're going to dance with us today? Yes. Yes, good. Mm. Arm forward, a la seconde. 
and demi and open demi very good that's it use your arm and pour a bra towards the bar stretch really stretch stretch and open for a couple in our audience actually it's a silver wedding anniversary present and it's for you and mr. and mrs. Jack Holmes where are you come on Maureen and Jack where are you please come and join me I can give you this little prezzy now come and join us Chuck Hi, Jack. Hello. I like that name, Jack. Have a sit down there. Well, congratulations. Now, I know I'm a bit previous, aren't I? When is your silver wedding anniversary? 25th of June. The 25th of June. Well, as it's the last show, we thought we'd give you, you know, a little surprise. Now, tell me, you and Jack here, you met on a blind date? <laughs> yes. And how many years ago was that? 25. Almost coming up in June. But what I want to know, we're all dying to know, who introduced you on this blind date? My friend Carol Peckings. Carol Peckings. Mm -hmm. And 15 months after that fateful day, Jack, yeah. <laughs> you actually tied the knot. Yeah. And you're going to have a big do, I believe, in June, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And I know it's your great wish to have Carol to be there with you. Yes, we've lost contact with her now. I know you have. You haven't seen her for 20 years, but they're mixed up for addresses. And I know you're desperate to see it because you do want to invite her to the anniversary party. Yes. Well, surprise, surprise, we found Carol. <laughs> we really have her. She is. You haven't seen her for over 20 years, but she's here tonight. Come in, Carol. Say hello to your mate. <laughs> Uh, 
So, that's little Miss Matchmaker there, oh, Carol. It is. Are you happy now, Maury? Yes, thank you. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, while you're catching... I'm filling up myself. <laughs> while you're catching up on the last 20 years, because you haven't seen each other for 20 years, I think we better take a break there. But we will be back, because Gordon Burns will be here in a couple of minutes with Searchline. I'll be doing a bit of juggling. So, I shall see you all in a mo. I'm so pleased for you. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, last week I rang 17-year-old Mark Sanders, who was so laid back he was practically horizontal. Not only does he juggle with five balls and fire sticks, he does it while riding a unicycle. He must be mad. Well, anyway, here he is, the lovely Mark Sanders. <laughs> You were very relaxed on the phone oh, last week, yes. weren't you? Well, welcome. Welcome to Surprise, Surprise, oh, Ash. Thank you. We've got a lovely audience here. Oh, yeah. And you're going to teach me how to juggle in I front am. of this lot. <laughs> oh, gosh. What's the first thing I've got to do, Mark? First, try, just try two balls at a, at a time. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK. Well, I used, you know, I used to be quite good at the, you know, two at school. Yeah. yeah. Mark. And three, just, just like this, you see, look. Uh, three. <laughs> would, you, would you like to try three? Oh, yes, easy, peasy. Any time you Anytime. like. Throw one in, Mark. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's not fair. Little, and again, and again, you, you pick the... Oh, yes, yes. Start off with, you know, be gentle with me, Mark. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, it's not working. There no. must be an easier way of doing this. There is, know. as this happens, a foolproof method. Is there really? For the, those more mornic among us. Oh, really? For, <laughs> for all those fools out there, including me, what is the method? Well, do you trust me? Implicitly. Go like this. I'm going like that. My <laughs> favourite pose, actually. <laughs> but I'll go to the foot of our stairs. You wait? Well, really? And wait. Ooh. Ooh. Get used to this. <laughs> well, now they've all seen I'm hopeless at juggling, but I know you're absolutely brilliant at oh, well, doing it on the unicycle up there. How tall is the unicycle? Seven foot. Seven Last foot. time I looked. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you stand by for your big finale, and I shall give you the big build-up. Okay. Exit stage left. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, with his seven-foot unicycle, we have... I'm not going to say the rest. We have Mark Sanders. There you go, my little chuggy egg. And uh, watch out. Oh, don't burn yourself, Chuck. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I think not, 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 not one <laughs> flaming fire torch. Not, not two flaming fire torch. Are you free charging this? Oh, three. Three? <laughs> that wasn't a trick. Shut up. Uh, I am now going for your amusement and enjoyment. Juggle the fire. <laughs> Please, this is the serious bit, okay? Absolutely superb. Well, thank you. Because it's awfully difficult doing it seven it foot up in the air, and then you're about <laughs> six foot on top of that. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank well you. done, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Dan. <laughs> well, now it's time to catch up with Searchline, and of course, the lovely Gordon Burns. 
Well, being the last show in the series, I'm sure you'll want to know all about the tremendous successes we've had since my last update a few weeks back, so I'll be devoting most of the second part of Searchline to that. But for part one, let's pack in as many stories as we can. And first, the story of an incredible rescue at sea during the Second World War. Jack Roberts was 17 at the time and a junior ordinary seaman aboard the SS Fort Bellingham. The merchant ship set sail for Russia from the Royal Victoria Dock London in January 1944. On January the 27th, it was torpedoed off Bear Island, and most of the hands were lost. But Jack Roberts and another able seaman called Patsy, both covered in oil, clung to each other in blizzard conditions in the water. Patsy, who was 21, kept Jack's spirits up until they drifted away from each other. Patsy was picked up by HMS Offer. The captain, believing no one else could have survived, prepared to sail away. But Patsy pleaded with him to keep looking. Then suddenly the clouds cleared and the northern lights illuminated the night sky and Jack Roberts was spotted and hauled on board. Jack says he owes his life to Patsy and would love to find him again to say thank you. So Patsy, once an able seaman on SS Fort Bellingham, ring us now. Now, attention all Silder Stalkers. If you know what it means, it could be you we're looking for. Silder Stalkers are herring packers in Iceland. So here's a potted story of four Cumbrian girls who went out there on a working holiday back in 1964. Sandra Turner from Barrow in Furness wrote to say what a great time they had. These were her friends, Sandra Tassel, known as Tass, Sinead Brown and Jacqueline Ferns, all from Carlisle. It's almost 25 years since they were all together and Sandra Turner is keen to stage a Silder Stalkers reunion. So, let's hope this story will net them. Please get on the line, ladies. And from Silda Stalkers in Iceland to missionaries in Spain. And you can't get a bigger contrast than that. The time is the 1980s, the place Alicante, and the person we're looking for is Maura La Roche. That's her on the right of that photograph. With her is Cathy Van Stratton and Cathy's children, Joy and Patrick. Cathy and her husband, Chris, met Maura when they were working out there as missionaries, but lost touch when they returned to England in 1989. So Maura La Roche, if you ring the search line number, the prayers of Chris and Cathy Van Stratton will be answered. Next, we're off on the hunt for a missing national chairman. Please be upstanding Tony Dunn, who between 1967 and 72 was National Chairman and Public Relations Officer for the National Federation of 18 Plus Groups. Tony, who used to live in Sidcup, Kent, played a leading role in the expansion of the organisation, but now can't be found. This year is the 50th anniversary of 18 Plus and a big reunion will take place in May. The former Assistant General Secretary of the organisation, John Aitchison, is helping to stage it and would be thrilled if Tony would ring us. And finally, to the Recipe Kings. That was the collective name for six of the RAF Signal Division who did national service together from 1950 to 52. Their names are Malcolm Walters, Mick Tobin, Ron Grosset, Johnny Grotham, Len Clark and Malcolm Saunders. The Recipe Kings were based at Biggin Hill and their job was to inform air traffic control on the bearings of an incoming plane and how to guide it back to base. The corporal in charge at the time, Don Hazelgrove, now aged 57 and living in Brentford, London, would like to get you all together again, lads, so let's have your bearings and we'll guide you into a great reunion. And here's the number to ring if anybody out there can help us with tonight's Searchline stories. 071 222 8070. I shall be back shortly with, as I promised, news of those successes. But right now, here's Silla. Thanks a lot, Gordon. We shall see you later, all right, Chuck? For the final one. Never mind. Yeah. On with the show. Now, isn't it funny how some people have names that seem to go with their jobs? There's a butcher near us called Mr. Lamb. Yes. <laughs> and I used to know a gardener called Mr. Moa. Well, the other week, I got a letter from Fiona Birchenough about her driving instructor. And his name was, wait for it, Terry Manuel. Yes. <laughs> Terry or Terence Frederico Manuel, as he calls himself, lives in Warrington. Now Fiona wrote saying what a marvellous instructor he was. He's such a cheerful person. She says he never gets in a bad mood, always makes you laugh, and he seems to know everybody in Warrington and gives them a wave every five minutes. Now Fiona finished her letter by saying she could go on forever about Terry. So why didn't I just pick up the phone, make a date, and have a driving lesson of my life? Well, I did. But under a different name, of course. Have a look at this. Terry Manuel. Surprise, surprise. Oh, wow. This is still a black picture. Yes, it is me, Terry. Shall I tell you why I'm here? Yes, love. Well, I'm here to deliver you a syllogram. Go on then. Do you want to do it in the car? I'll do it, doing it here. Oh, but we'll do it and we'll do I'm it in the car. Words or what? And I, you know who's called? This is, don't you? I've no idea. My wife. 
No, it's one of your really lovely pupils. She thinks you're absolutely... It's Maggie Rose, I'll thump her one. No, it's, no, 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 no. You've mentioned... It's, uh... <laughs> it's Fiona. Yes, I she... like that. Hello, love. She wrote this lovely letter saying that you are a brilliant instructor <laughs> and that you wave to everybody. Yes, like that. All in all, Sorry, no. you're a wonderful person. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Hello, Madge. <laughs> Are you ready? I am, love. Now, we're not using your car. You haven't locked your car. car we use, got a, a big roller. That's another surprise. <laughs> We weren't wearing seat belts. Well, you don't have to because it was an old car and you don't have to wear them, you see. But right now it's showtime, so let's go over to Wishy Washy's Chinese Laundry for Act One of our surprise, surprise panto. Whack. I better get my skates on. I'll miss my entrance. See you in a moment. Knickers, knickers, knickers. I'm always up to my elbows in suds and knickers. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. My name is Wishy Washy. I run this wonderful shop, this Wishy Washy Clothes Cleaning Emporium. We wash and you wish we hadn't. <laughs> but hark! I can hear someone coming. Wishy! Wishy! Watty, watty! My name's Aladdin and I'm a fella. <laughs> We can see, we can see, but never mind all that. You're in dead trouble, you, because because that Emperor's evil thug, Abanaza, is after you as we speak at this very moment. I know he is. I've been dodging that horrible Abanaza all day. And, and I know why. Why? You've been thieving. <gasps> I haven't been thieving, was she? Honestly, I haven't. Anyway, it's not called thieving when you climb up a tree and take a few apples, is it, kids? No! What's it called? Pinching. Sally? What pun? Pinching. Is it? <laughs> it's not pinching. Sally knows, don't you, Sally? Scrumpy. Yes. It's scrumpy. Scrumpy. Yes. Scrumpy. yes. Scrumpy. <laughs> anyway, I don't climb up the tree for the apples. No. No. Sally knows, don't you, Sally? You know why I climb up that tree. <laughs> I climb up that tree to have a look at the princess. The princess. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't mind me looking at her, you know. No. 
In fact, when she sees me, she looks at me back. What's wrong with your front? <laughs> Seen a it's up and down, it's a quick pipe, pipe! Oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm hiding, I'm Shut up, you horrible lot! Don't you know who I am? I'm Abanaza. Yeah, you're all the same Grand vizier to the emperor of China. And I'm looking for that scrumping scoundrel, Aladdin. Ah, there's that old fool, wishy-washy, uh, the laundry man. Let's find out if he's seen Cinderella. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean. I'm awfully sorry. Uh, anyway, who are you? Abanaza. I'm a banana? Abanaza. You get confused about your pantos as well as your name, no? <laughs> well, I'm awfully pleased to meet you, Mr. Abanaza. How can I help you? I'm looking for that meddlesome boy, Aladdin. Aladdin, let me see when did yes. I see him, when did I see him? Oh, I know, I've seen him. It was a, a, a week last Wednesday, or was it Thursday? Oh, oh be sure quiet, because... you blundering buffoon! <laughs> he must be here. He stole something that belongs to me, which I must take back. He scrumped my special apple that contains a secret map that will lead me to a treasure cave. And that treasure will make me wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. Away! I've got it! I've got it! I've got well, it! Give that map to me! It's mine! Get off your old tea bag. <laughs> I've got this magic map here, which will lead me to my fortunes. Which then I'll be able to marry the princess. Yes. But, Aladdin, what? you'll never be strong enough to carry back the treasure. Take me with you. No. And I will help you carry back the loot, and then we can both be rich. No. Well, listen, I can't carry it on my own. I mean, after all, but she, what have I got to lose? All right, Baldy. Nothing. <laughs> I'll go it. Hang on, you're upstage, are you? <laughs> treasure and you can follow me. Now don't be late. See you later, Wish. All right, oh. Little does she know, I only need the magic lamp. I'm a set out. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm a man. Little does she know <laughs> that I only need the magic lamp which is part of that treasure and when I have it, I will leave Aladdin in that cave. Well, we'll be back for Act Two in a couple of minutes. We'll also have another search line from Mark Gordon and an operatic aria from John Philpotts and a super surprise for somebody sitting right here in our audience. So, see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Well, the curtain's just about to rise on Act Two of our pantomime, so away we go. That means me as well. Oh, off again. Well, I wonder where Aladdin is. He's been away for minutes now. <laughs> that double crossing devil. I offered Aladdin all the treasure, but. He's run off with a magic lamp. Yay! I'm sure he'll be back to see his brother wishy-washy. I'll hide here and wait for his return. Wishy! 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 Wishy-washy! Wishy! I'm back! Aladdin, you're back. I am back. Not yet, he's not. <laughs> 
Because you're on the run again. Oh, I must be those prunes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that nasty old Abanaz. I mean, I've got all the treasure and everything, but, you know, this lamp, he's got something about this lamp. I don't know what he sees in it at all. I mean, look at the state of it. Filthy. It's absolutely filthy, isn't oh, I, it? I haven't seen him. I don't know where he is. <laughs> what? He can't be there because I tell you why, lad. If he was there, we'd be able to smell him because yeah. he's so smelly that he's a smelly he's a smelly welly. I got his shoes anyway. If you went like that, Aladdin. He's a pongy wongy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me that lamp, Aladdin. I will not have a any. <laughs> that lamp, I mean, look at the state of it. It's not even clean. I mean, it needs a good rub, doesn't it? I mean, look don't at do it. that! Don't rub it! Surprise, don't. surprise, it's Genie here. <laughs> it's it's a a genie, genie of the, of the lamp. lamp! Aladdin, I'm so glad you released me. I've been trapped for a lot of years. Well, you In fact, well. a Laura Laura years. <laughs> what is your reward? I will grant you three wishes. Hey, that's crazy, isn't it? Wishes. Fabulous. And the first wish goes to you. Come on, I'm dying to know. What are you going to wish for? You mean I can have anything I want in the whole wide world? You mean... A million pounds? Oh no, a new wash dryer. This one's hopeless. I can't believe it. <laughs> Granted, and it will be delivered a week next Wednesday, because we're out of stock at the moment. Oh. And for your second wish? I think for my second wish, Jeannie, I want Abanaza to be sweet smelling. No! Yes, I'm sweet talking. No! I want him to kiss everybody, even Sally down there. On the yes! <laughs> can you do that, Jeannie? A difficult job, but I think I can manage it. Oh, wishy-washy, let me help you with your ironing. Certainly. <laughs> That's two wishes. You've got one left. I know what you want. Yes? The hand of the princess in marriage. Yes, you're right, but I'd love the rest of her as well. <laughs> Your wish is my command, oh master. Where is she then? Oh, she'll be a bit late. She's stuck on the M25. <laughs> well, as it's a special occasion, I'm going to give you a wedding present. A golden coach to ride in. A lock. I want two white rolls. One for me and for my princess. Your wish is my command, oh master. <laughs> What's that, wishy? Two white rolls. One and one cheese. <laughs> To me tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, but you deserved it, Sonny. Thank you very much. For 50 Thank years of much. bringing sheer enjoyment yes. to all the children, the disabled yes. children and disabled yes. adults up yes. there in Sheffield. Yes. Yes. For all the money you raised, yes. Yes. this has been your yes, night. God bless you, love. Thank I hope you, you very enjoyed much. it. Yes. I didn't feel a thing, really. But as this is the last search line in the series, we're going to find out about some successes we've had so far. Tell us what's on first, Gordon. Well, we uh, start part two with a personal appeal from Sonia Graham. She's trying to find her natural mother, who tragically had to give her up for adoption shortly after birth. Sonia told me the full story. I was born on the 19th of May, 1969, at Bethnal Green Hospital, and my mother called me Vicky. And your mother was just 17? That's right, yeah. She felt that she couldn't look after me because she already had a daughter that was a year older than me, who she called Diane Jane. And uh, the house where she lived with her mother and uh, her stepfather, and my mother's stepfather, um, they, there was already seven brothers living there, and her mother just felt that she couldn't keep me as well. Um, 
So they really thought it was in your best interest to have you adopted? That's right, yeah. She thought, you know, there's, there's no way that she'd kept one daughter, you know, and she couldn't keep me as well. And from that day, you have no idea where... No, you know, where I've, she I've looked, you know, I've been through all the records and everything, and I've just come to a dead end, really. The family has moved. And now you yourself have two young children, haven't you? That's right, yeah. I've got um, a little boy who's three and a little girl who's 18 months. Yeah, and it'd be really nice if I could, um, you know, they could meet their nan, really. <laughs> Another nan. <laughs> so your message to her is get in touch right yeah, now. Yeah, if you're out there, you know, get in touch. It'd be really nice. Well, let's hope we have success there, just as we've had a lot of success stories on Searchline since my last update. Uh, for example, you may remember Dave Taff Brown, who was looking for his old RAF pals, Roy Baines, Jim Furlong and Steve McLean. He last saw them on his wedding day on the 30th of April 1955. Well, they're all in touch again, and no doubt reliving an unforgettable stag night. Then there's Delcy Jones, who made a personal appeal. She was looking for her cousins, Peter and Gordon Russell, whom she last saw in Bargoyd, Wales, in 1943. Well, all three were our guests here at Surprise Surprise last week, and you've never seen such a happy trio. Iris and Alan Heap have finally been put back in touch with their bridesmaid, Adelaide Nash, after celebrating their ruby wedding anniversary. Ian and Andre Bell, who married in Rome in 1947, are in touch with Eric Jones, the man they shanghaied into being Ian's best man. And there's been a really happy ending for Jacqueline Byrne. Her parents' marriage broke up in 1962 when Jackie was just one year old. Jackie went to Germany with her father and never saw her mother again. But now, thanks to Searchline, she's back in contact with her mother and has also discovered two brothers and a sister she didn't know she had. There's more, but I haven't time to tell you, I'm afraid, because that's the end of Searchline for this series. If you can help with any of tonight's earlier stories, please ring on 071-222-8070. Our researchers will be here until 10 o'clock tonight, or you can write to us at this address. Surprise, surprise, LWT, South Bank TV Centre, London, SE99, 6YW. And that's it. Safe to say thank you to all of you who've rung in to help with Searchline, and indeed to our magnificent research team who works so hard behind the scenes. But now it's goodbye to you, and goodbye to you, sir. Oh, it's sad, Gordon. And don't forget, magic yourself back to us next series. There's a genie around, it would be my first wish. <laughs> See you then, then. Look forward to it. Well, now it's time for a touch of the Puccini, so settle down and listen to the golden voice of Don Philpott as he sings for us a shortened version of Ness and Dorma.
medical say. I mean, really, you've on you were only eating pizzas half an hour ago. <laughs> that was absolutely fabulous, wasn't he, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Well, now, sitting somewhere in our audience are twin sisters. Yes, surprise, surprise. It's you, Margaret Cooper, and Anna Gubb. Where are you, sweethearts? Come on, sweethearts. Come and join me on the sofa. Have I got a surprise for you? Sweetheart, have a sit down there. Now it's Anna, but you like to be called Anna, I believe. Is that right? <laughs> Anna, hi, Anna. <laughs> sit down to your twin sister there. Oh, well, you do look alike. And you owe, you owe all this business here to your husband, Margaret, your husband, Ray. Yes, he's here. He wrote and told me all about you, and it's a very heartwarming. I broke my heart when I read it, actually, the letter. Because when you were just a few weeks old, your parents had to make a very, very difficult decision because of dire circumstances that they were in, they had to put you up for adoption. But one thing that your mum did stipulate is that, well, you know, you had to be adopted together. She wouldn't allow them to split you up. And indeed, you were adopted by a very loving family, who, when you were old enough to understand, they did tell you were adopted. Is that right? Mm. And that prompted you both. You thought, well, I want to find me, me mum and dad, so you got your birth certificates. And you found out exactly who your mum and dad were. Now, what are the names? Lorna and Henry James Walbridge. Lorna and Henry James Walbridge. James Walbridge. Now, Walbridge is a, is a Guernsey name, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what did you do then, Margaret? Um, we phoned up all the Walbridges in Guernsey. You've literally got the phone book in Guernsey and you phoned up all the Walbridges. All the Walbridges you could find. And um, then... Um, but actually a friend helped me, helped me call Tina and she did the speaking and she spoke to, um, I think it was my Auntie Jackie who um, was my dad's sister. Yes, yeah, Auntie and Jackie and she revealed an awful lot to you, didn't she? Yeah. She said that, well, you were quite disappointed because your parents had emigrated to Australia, hadn't they? Yeah. But what the good news was that um, you did find out that you had, you had a sister, didn't you? Yeah. Cherie. Yeah. And then later on you found out, sadly, that your dad had died in 1978. Mm. But that didn't stop you. You got in touch with your mum and she was absolutely thrilled to bits. I mean, she was wishing that you would get in touch because, as you know, when you put children up for adoption, mm. they can't find you. And she was so thrilled that you found her and you've, mm. you've written to her over the years and you've even spoken to her on the phone, mm. but you've never, ever met but I know it's very important. Ray told me it was very important to you now because she, she has health problems with her eyesight. Yes. yes. She can't even write back now. Can't, she can't she? see. Well, she well, doesn't have to write back, girls, because we've flown her all the way over from Australia to be with you tonight, and you're going to meet your sister for the first time. Here she is, your mother, Lorna, and your Cherie. Come in, Lorna, and Cherie, look, and don't you look like her. watching them as much we've enjoyed 
making them. I'd like to thank everybody who's appeared on tonight's show and indeed all our shows, especially Gordon Burns and of course the lovely Bob Cowgees. Thanks for watching. Good night. God bless. Ta-ra then. Ta-ra. And next Friday at 8 o'clock, there's a new comedy starring James Burlam and Lydna Bellingham in Second Thoughts.